All right, hey, you guys know what GDP is. A lot of you guys back in social studies, you learned that GDP is gross domestic product. It's a measure of how much stuff we produce in our economy. But we just want to get a little bit more precise on the definition because if you really understand this definition and know it well, then figuring out what's included and what's not included uh, becomes a much easier thing to do because it's in the definition. So first off, GDP is the market value. Now what does that mean? It means that we're going to use whatever the market prices of the goods and services are, the goods and services that we're uh, putting into GDP, so the market value. So each different good, whatever its market value, its market price is, that's what we're going to use. What does that mean is not included? It means things that don't have a market value. Just because they don't have a market value, they don't have a market price, doesn't mean they're not valuable. Okay? MasterCard commercial. Okay? I mean, think about it. There's a lot of stuff that we get that we don't have a market price for. Spending a day at the beach. That's something very valuable, but that's not accounted for in GDP. If your mom makes a nice home-cooked meal, well, the value of the ingredients that she used gets included, but... The value of her service doesn't. If someone stays home and takes care of their kids, that doesn't count in GDP, that household production. There's not a market value on that. That's a non-market activity. However, if someone else sends their kids to child care, that's going to get included because there's a market value for that service. So that's an important one. The market value. What's next? Of all, of all, everything, everything in the whole economy. GDP is an aggregate measure. It means we're adding up everything that's produced. Okay? Final, that part, just one word, it tells us a lot. What we mean by a final good or service, that's something that, it's the end user. Meaning, there are some times when a good is intermediate. For example, if I go to the store and I buy eggs, and I take them home and I consume those eggs, that's a final good. So that's going to get counted. However, if Harry's, Harry's Diner right over there in La Jolla, if they buy eggs that they're going to use, that are going to go into their omelets, those eggs don't get counted because we're going to count the value of the omelets. If we count all of the inputs into products, we're going to end up double counting and we don't want to do that. So we designate only the final goods and services. Now you might say, well, what about investment? Because there are some things like Harry's, those guys over there, maybe they put in a refrigerator. That's not an intermediate good. That's capital. Because they're going to use that over and over and over and over. Whereas the egg, crack, they make the omelet, that's it. It goes into the omelet. If they're going to produce any more, they've got to get more eggs. That's an intermediate good. And the value of that shows up in the value of the omelet. I mean, think how silly it would be if we said, well, let's get the value of a car, and now let's add up the value of all the parts. That's why we end up double counting. We don't want to do that to get a good measurement here. So what do we say? The market value of all final goods and services. It's very important that we remember there's a lot of services. Okay? Sometimes people get caught up in the idea that, hey, America doesn't make anything anymore. Okay? That's just on BS. I'll tell you straight up that is. Because you know what we do? We produce different kinds of things. You can't tell me we don't produce stuff when we have $14 trillion GDP. We produce services, and that's very important. What are some of those services? And we're not talking just low-level services, fast food services or something like that. We're talking medical services, legal services, research services. There's educational services. There's a lot of services there that we're going to include as part of our production. Okay? All right, so where are we at so far? The market value of all final goods and services Put them in some different colors because I want you to remember those different, those different parts of the definition. So the market value of all final goods and services, 
Very important here. Produced. Not consumed. Not purchased. But produced. That means that we're going to have a little bit of a trick going on here. Sometimes there's some things that we produced in one year, but we don't consume them or purchase them until another year. So there's a few little accounting tricks that we're going to have to use to make sure that we get everything in there. I'll talk to you about those in a little bit. Actually, I'll talk to you that on the, on the next video here. For right now, we'll leave that at that. So it's the market value of all final goods and services produced in a country. Within the borders of a country. Now that's an important part of the definition too. It doesn't matter who made it. It doesn't matter if they're illegal, illegal. We're talking about the value of the production within our borders. Now, when I first started taking economics, GDP wasn't the statistic that we were learning. We were learning GNP. You guys ever see GNP? Gross national product. Now, gross national product is very similar. The difference being that this would say, instead of in a country, it would say by the citizens of a country. Which means if we have some U.S. citizens living abroad, like when I lived in Korea, the value of my production over there would count toward U.S. GNP. But when we're dealing with GDP, the value of my production in Korea counts toward Korea's GDP. So that's a little distinction there. Now, for some places where they don't have a lot of their citizens living abroad or many foreigners living within their borders, then GDP and GMP are going to be very similar. One example is maybe the Philippines. The Philippines has a lot of its citizens that live and work abroad. Therefore, its GNP is higher than its GDP. Okay? Last thing, there's a time element here. And I already kind of uh, made some reference to that here because uh, we had indicated that what's produced in a year versus what's consumed or what's purchased in a year. So we're going to say here, in a year. Now that's the most standard way of doing it is in a year. Technically speaking, it could be any given period of time. We could look at the GDP for the decade. But just so we have a basis of comparison, we look at that yearly. So even when we get quarterly estimates of GDP, we usually present those in annual, we adjust those and make them annual figures so that it makes some sense in making those comparisons. So there it is, the market value of all final goods and services produced in a country in a, I should say given year, in a given year. So whatever year we're talking about, it's what's produced in that year. So that's the definition. You guys get that down. Hey, check out the other video where we talk about what's included, what's not included. Because if you understand this definition, that becomes a lot easier.